welcome. This is Melissa Arnold with the stock swoosh, and I'm doing the results so far year to date for 2021. So it's really Sunday is October 31st. It's hard to believe. Monday morning is November 1st. We have two more months, just two more months left in 2021. That's unbelievable to me. This year flew by and far faster uh, than 2020, quite frankly. So, so far year to date with an advanced trader risk, which is an average of $2,500 risk per train. Uh, the results so far this year are $490,010. So again, you can risk a smaller amount. You could risk half that. You could risk three quarters of it. It's whatever you decide that you want to risk and can afford. So these were all trades called in the live trading room. In order to join the live trading room, you have to do the Golden Gap course. That is a prerequisite. Why? Because you have to know what we're doing. The trade set up fast. All of these trades are fast trades where you're in and you're out. We're not lollygagging around all day in these trades. I mean, I'm not going to kill something if it keeps going, but I'm really not holding trades that long. These are active day trades, not options, equity trades, okay? If you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. Right now, it's earnings season. We had some explosive, explosive moves yesterday. Uh, very exciting just, I mean, I just finally feel like things are back to normal. Uh, it, 20 months into COVID, I finally feel like we are back to a normal earnings season because we had earnings seasons prior to this in 2020 and even in 2021 where I felt like things were not, were not normal earnings, but we're back to normal in that sense and I am thrilled for that. So again, these are all the ticker symbols we did. I try to do one thing a day and if I end up doing more, chances are it's because the first trade lost but the best days I ever had are usually one ticker symbol per day. That's how I like to do it. So these are all the trades in the month of January starting out this year. And again, we usually have gaps most days. Occasionally, there'll be a day where I don't have any trades to do and there aren't any gaps to meet my criteria. But specifically, what I'm looking for is the best gap to trade every day. I first go to the short side. If I don't find anything to the downside, then I'll go long. But I do prefer to short, particularly for day trades. And the reason is it's short moves. Selling happens quicker than longs. Although we did Microsoft yesterday, which was the 27th, that was an explosive move. But it really, it did go all day, actually. So we started out the beginning of the year with Boeing. That was our favorite stock, really, for 2020. We've done it this year, but we did it more last year than I probably will ever do it again. And a couple good ones in here that we love. Netflix, of course, as well. That was a great one. So the beginning of the year, you have earnings season. There's four quarters, okay? So we're in the last one here, and this will be the whole rest of the month of November for the earnings season. So you start out first quarter in January. Here you can see this was a great week. We did Boeing, Twitter, Wells Fargo, Twitter. I mean, Netflix was a good one. Net needed a retake, but that was okay. Still a winning day. Again, if you come to me and you want to trade with me, I would look to figure every of every 10 trades, seven will win and three will lose. That's how you have to figure it out. And then you have to size your trades pretty much equal to or close to equal to every one that you did. Again, this was earnings season. Great trade in IBM. IBM, I swear, I never lose in that trade. We just did that last week. Was that last week? Yeah. I IBM, I make money all the time. Love trading IBM. Apple's tonight, but this was, we did it in January. Winner, Verizon winner, Boeing winner, Spy winner. There was a day we didn't do anything on the 28th. But I mean, there are most of the days we will do do trades Facebook. We did a lot this year, actually. There's a Facebook. You can see in here one day I had a hard day. Lost in the spy, then didn't the retake break even, lost in QCOM, did another one break even. You can that day I lost. There isn't that many days like that in a year where I will lose on the on the actual day. And we never have a losing week, but I will have losing trades. It's rare I have a losing day. Usually I try to come back. But that was a difficult day. Um and then we had a big trade in Twitter. This was again February. Big trade and save. Disney we haven't done for a while. To look up those earnings, probably later in November. Twitter was a big one too. Closed on the 15th. Another nice one in Twitter. Walmart, Twitter. Walmart again. So we just look for the best thing every single day. Again, you can tell the days when I just hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. We have one thing, do it done. One thing, do it done. I call it chunking it out. Of course, you know, that's the ideal situation. Sometimes I'll do a retake though, like look at the spy and then it'll go. But in an ideal world, I'm done every day by 10 a.m. And it'll be interesting to see what Apple does tonight. Again, this was beginning of the year, March. Apple had a move, Stitch Fix. Did that twice in there. Oracle, I'll have to look when those earnings are too. I think those are November as well. 
Lily Spy, no trades in the 17th. Huge winner in Apple, that was the 18th. Uh, Nike was a winner on the 19th. Again, these are all day trades. All day trades where you have to have an account to do the actual day trade. Most are short, some are longs. I'm calling the trade live in the room. I'm calling the entry, the stop, and the exit. Again, if you want to join, you have to do the Golden Gap course to get all these trades. We're doing these all in the morning now. I open the room at 8.30 a.m., and then you can just follow along. Apple, we did on the 30th. Lulu was a good one. Off for the week of April, that was Easter. No trades on the 12th. Did a bunch of things on the 13th. Uh, BBBY was break even. Netflix we did in there. Another IBM, look at that IBM. Microsoft there. Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. Another Microsoft, that was a good trade. Uber didn't work that day, I remember that in May. Etsy was a good one. BYND was crazy that day, very volatile. And Shaq was a good one that worked. And sometimes we do the market ETFs, not all the time, but if I see the market's gonna have a move, we'll do it. Big trade on the SPY on the 12th, and Target on the 13th. I have to look up those earnings too. And we did the Disney on the 14th, another Microsoft, AT&T. Got into the summer months here again. We do what we can. We had retail earnings. The Nordstrom was on the 26th, DLTR, HPQ was a good one. SPY didn't work June 1st. Apple was a big one on June 2nd. Then we had a bunch of them in here. Apple, Stitch Fix, did Stitch, Stitch Fix a couple of times. Uh, Microsoft, Lily had to do it twice. And another one in Apple, CCL we didn't do much this year. Oracle is pretty good to trade. I really have to look up those earnings to look forward to that. JPM we did, SPY we did, no trades in the 21st. Apple, again, explosive moves in some of these stocks we've been having this year. And really, we'll do stocks, we'll short stocks that are in uptrends. We'll go long stocks that are downtrends. So it has nothing to do with that. I'm looking at the gap. I get up in the morning and I rate the gap. 25th, we did FDX. SPY was a loser. Q's was a winner on the 28th. New trades is the 29th. Apple was a winner. STZ was break even. Mu won. Apple won. And then off for the July 4th holiday. So I really think this month in November is the busiest, busiest time to trade. Again, Apple's out tonight. Amazon is out tonight. A slew of things all the way up into Thanksgiving week. Here we did the Boeing again. BAC was a nice one. That was a short. Houston worked. Netflix worked. Diamonds we did. That was a good one on the 19th. No trades on the 20th. Netflix was a winner on 21st. LVS winner. INTC winner. LVS winner. UPS winner. Just hit it, hit it, hit it. Did PayPal two winners in that. That week Microsoft did not work, but that was a good, strong, solid close into uh, the end of July. No trades. On the second, T2 won. CVS didn't work right. Did CCL the SPY. CVS worked the second day. Sometimes that happens. EXPA was a winner. Boeing on the 9th. No trades on the 10th. This is into the summer. Weight Watchers was a good one. Baidu was a good one. Did Baidu the second day and it worked. Did Baidu the third day and it worked. And the Qs. And Boeing again on the 17th. Um, then what else did we do? Target lost on the 18th. Boeing lost on the 18th. Q's won on the 18th, and Boeing was a winner on the 19th. That Boeing, if we get that at the right point, is a great stock to trade. It's just, we've been, to be honest with you, mostly shorting it. Mostly shorting it. And really, the earnings that the earnings were yesterday, was it the day before? The earnings were bust. We didn't do anything in that, their earnings this, this uh, quarter, which is interesting. No trades on the 20th. No trades on the 23rd. AAP lost. Apple lost. That was a losing day. Urban won. JWN then the next day, the 25th. DLTR won. Piton won. No trades on the 30th. Zoom was a winner on the 31st. Zoom is another fun stock to trade. That is a fun stock to trade as an option, and it is also a fun stock to trade as an equity trade. For the days that I happen to do, for the people that are doing options and day trades with me, if I do an option in something and a day trade in it on the same day, which we did yesterday with Microsoft, you know that's a good gap. You better jump all over that thing. You know I'm in love with it if I happen to do that for sure. Uh, because again, I don't do that in everything. Like I will not always do an option in something I'm doing equity trade. Absolutely not. But if I happen to, you know I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely am in love with it. No trades in September 1st. Chewy was a loser. Boeing loser. Zoom lost. And Chewy won. That was right after Labor Day. Spy lost. BYND. Big winner. That stock is can move big too. 
Boeing was a winner on the 7th, Spy Lost, then a winner on the not and the 8th that needed a retake. Ninth, no trades. It's off for my birthday week. And Q's was a big trade on the 20th. No trades, the 21st, FDX, big winner. Did that the next day, twice. Nike won, Q's won. I feel like we've done the market a lot lately. The market's been moving. Uh, $29,100 on the 20th. That was just a huge trade in the market. We didn't add, it worked. Uh, no trades on the 29th, KSS was the winner on the 30th, no trades on the 1st, Facebook won, no trades on the 5th, Facebook lost, Q's lost, and a video, big winner, no trades on the 8th, closed on the 11th, Facebook lost, and then a winner on the 2nd trade in Facebook, again, sometimes you'll have to do a retake, sometimes that's the case, and while I prefer to get it right out of the gate, the most important thing to me is to get it as quickly as possible, and I try to get the best entry I can. If I get stopped in out, out of it, I retake it. But I'm always trying to get in something like really literally at the high of the day in a short and at the low of the day in a long. And it's because I did all the pre-planning in the morning. I did the rating. I did all of it. And then sometimes I do an ad, which is an advanced concept, which I review in the class too. Closed on the 13th. Boeing won. Facebook won. Z was a winner. PG lost. Apple won. Spy won. Break even on the 20th. IBM was a winner on the 21st. We did an option in that too. INTC won and Facebook won on the 22nd. Then this week, going into the very end of October, Facebook required two trades and still, still uh, did not work. BYND did not work and then a break even in Facebook. That was a losing day on Monday. Then on Tuesday, Apple worked. Small loss in the queues in the spy and Facebook worked. Recovery from Tuesday. And, and then Wednesday was a huge day because of the Microsoft. And I did a retake in that. I was just a little aggressive in that. TXN, we got stopped in, and some people retook it, but I actually did not. But that did go on to work. I could have done a retake in that too, which is crazy. I didn't want to do too much. I just felt then to focus on the Microsoft, and that's what I did. But TXN, you could have retaken it, and you could have made money in that too. In fact, I think some people didn't put the stop in, but I always put a stop in. What do I mean? I mean I put a limit order stop in. So that if the trade stops out, I lose because that helps me. It's like the insurance to protect me from letting the trade go against itself too much because my average risk per trade is $2,500 or thereabouts. This is not an exact science. You want you got to get in, you got to get it fast, but it's got to be close enough. You can't risk $2,500 in a trade. You want to risk a thousand or five thousand if you really want to risk $2,500. Anyway, so, so far it has been a good year. I'm going to look to have a very strong November because this is the time to do it. Um, we've been having a lot of volatility in things, despite the fact that the market's been bullish. We've shorted a lot. We will go long, though. We did the long in Microsoft. Uh, again, you can trade my system with a beginner risk. You just would take less size, less risk. That's all. You can take 500 share lots, 100 share lots. You can ask me about that if you have questions and how I call the trades in the room. You can open up a prop account or a retail account to trade on margin. You get different margin risks based on that, and you've got to talk to the broker. Again, you've got to have charts. You've got to have pre-market data. You've got to be able to short. All of these things are things that you need, but there's so many different choices out there now for people to be able to trade. There's so many choices. There's no excuse for anybody to wait and say, well, I need $100,000 or $25,000 to trade. You can trade with as little as $2,500 if you want an account. And Robinhood, I think you can trade with 500, although I really, you know, I personally have never traded there. I know that there's people that are trading there with a small amount, but you'd have to be super duper careful with only $500. I think 2,500 is a small starter account. 5,000 is even good too. At 10 to one margin with a prop account, that's a good amount of money to take on the trades. And again, your risk has to be according to the cash size of your account. If you have a small account, you can build it up. If you have a big account, great. I'd still start out slow, particularly after the clash, because you want to make sure you get it. You have all the time in the world to be successful to do this. And I'm here to help you. I'm here to teach you, to help you. You will get it with my help and assistance. So the class is called the Golden Gap Porsche. Only two more classes left in 2021. I cannot believe where this year has gone. November 6th and 7th is a November class. Class tuition is $69.99 US dollars. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. If you want to do the combo, you get a discount for the trends course. You sign up for both. You do both classes. The trends course is a long-term trades and swing trades. And you don't want to miss this if you want to sign up. It's a good deal. It's a great offer. And then you'll learn